did a fine job. Would you turn with me this evening, please, in the Scripture to 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. 2 Corinthians 6. If you didn't bring a Bible with you, hold up your hand real high. The ushers have extra Bibles. We'd be glad to let you use one of ours. Hold up your hand real high and let's all turn to 2 Corinthians 6. I'm going to ask you to believe with me this evening. I don't know that I've ever really taught on this. And uh, preachers, you know how that feels. But uh, I do believe I have clear direction on it. And so we're, like always, we're stepping out by faith. But sometimes you got, at least you've done it by faith in that area a time or two before. But like, like Dr. Lillian B. Yeoman said, uh, God delights in his children stepping out over the aching void <laughs> with nothing underneath their feet but the Word of God. <laughs> it pleases God. For you to absolutely step out and not know where you're going. But trust Him that He'll get you there. And get you there in a wonderful way. So let's let's release our faith. um, And believe Him for exactly the right thing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we agree together as touching this thing. And we ask you. For utterance, precise, and complete. Help me, Lord, to speak. Speak through me and speak as the oracles of God. And give every one of us ears to hear and eyes that see and a heart that can receive. And, Lord, we'll give you all the glory and give you all the praise, not unto man but unto you. And we'll not be hearers only, but by your grace we will be doers And we'll be changed, and the people around us will be changed, and the world around us will be changed. Because your word is powerful and quick and changes its surroundings. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 2 Corinthians 6. He said, oh, you Corinthians, verse 11, oh, you Corinthians, you know when the Bible starts addressing you with oh, (laughs) you could go ahead and kneel down. (laughs) Huh? (laughs) Because it's time to repent. O you Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you. Our heart is enlarged. You are not straightened in us. But you are straightened in your own bowels. Now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children. Be ye also enlarged. And he's talking about in your heart. And that's the word I got from the Lord. For me, for you. For us, for this week. Be ye enlarged. And he's talking about a bigger heart. This word, enlarge, It it has to do with widening, widening, expanding and widening. And he said to them, he said, you're straightened. And that word uh, for straighten, it means uh, to hem in closely and to restrict. Now, I don't know exactly how you feel about this, but... I don't like narrow, tight stuff. I don't like narrow, tight houses. 
and narrow, tight cars. Huh? Do you? I think I kind of have a Texas Wyoming mentality in that regard. What do you mean? Ah, man, Texas folk will lean on the fence and talk to somebody a hundred yards away. Like it's normal. (laughs) I like that. People that grew up in the city in an efficiency where they could touch both walls, they get up in your face when they talk. (laughs) And you want to say, hey, hey, it's a big planet. God's a big God. Let's let's give each other some space here. (laughs) We haven't begun to understand the bigness of God. The further I go with Him, this becomes increasingly clear. How can you say it? without talking in tongues and you still don't say it all. He is so big. He's so big. There there are indicators of it all over the place. You know, as long as I've been old enough to understand anything, there are people, politicians and uh, individuals trying to sell stuff usually, Telling you that we're running out of everything. And the, what they're saying without saying it is that God did not have the foresight nor the ability to create a planet that could adequately sustain its inhabitants. It's a lie. It is a great big fat lie. The problem is most everybody wants to live right on top of each other. In one little spot. (laughs) Just in this country. You know, sometimes we're flying at night, especially out west. And up in Canada and up over in the northwest and different places. Man, you can fly for an hour at 500 miles an hour and see two lights. No, this planet, we haven't even begun to tap its resources. Don't you believe those lies? It's not true. God is not going to be surprised this year or if the Lord tarries has come in a hundred years from now and go, wow, I wish I'd have put some more of that in there because they they go run out of everything before this... He is so big. The vastness of the oceans, the vastness of space helps to give us an inkling because the one who made them is far bigger than what he made. Hmm? And here's the amazing thing. He that is so big is in us. How can he who is so big be inside this body occupying the same space with our spirit? We don't understand all that. But suffice it to say, he is vast, beyond description, big. And this is what we have to look forward to. The Scripture says, throughout the ages to come. Anybody remember what he said in Ephesians? What's he going to do? Throughout the ages to come, he's going to show us the exceeding riches of his grace. 
That's enough to make you cry and laugh and sing, talk in tongues the rest of the night and into the next... If, if, if you get a hold of what he said. What's happening right now is the briefest thing we will ever do. It's the shortest thing we'll ever do. And that seems like it's a little while to us because it's the only thing we've ever done. But pretty soon all this is going to be in our rearview mirror. <laughs> And we're going to really begin to find out who we are, why we were made, and what this is all about. And it's not going to lose momentum. And the amazing thing is it's not going to peak. Not a million years from now, not a hundred million years from now, not a billion years. There's never going to come a time when God's going to say, that's it. You have seen it all. We've done it all. Not going to happen. I want you to think about for a minute. How many have been born again and, and feeding on the Word and walking with the Lord more than 10 years? Okay. Or 20 years. Have you changed? <laughs> In that time. Are you a different person? What if you continued that for another 200,000 years? You know how much you've changed the past 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And what has happened is the further you grow and mature, you actually pick up speed. And what you're able to understand... And what you're able to receive, meaning you can receive much more the second ten years than you did the first ten years. Because of your base and your, your reference ability, your growth. A 20-year-old can receive a lot more than a two-year-old. So, if he's brought us this far in 10, 20, 30, 40 years... What kind of being will you be? What kind of person will you be? I want you to know the ignorance and the foolishness and the junk of all that stuff in this life will be long, long, long gone and forgotten. And you'll just be sailing, hallelujah, with the King of Kings, ruling and reigning with Him. And even at this present time, it does not appear what we shall be. And the world does not acknowledge and see that we are the sons of God. But there's coming a time when everybody that sees us won't have to ask. <laughs> a redeemed one. Not a servant, not an angel, a son. Yeah. Amen. Of the Most High God. When we were born again, here's the amazing thing. I didn't see this myself till just right this moment. <laughs> when we were born again, like an acorn has the potential of a giant oak tree. We were born with the ability to enlarge, to receive all of that at the new birth. It hasn't fully developed, obviously. But the ability to enlarge and keep enlarging and keep enlarging until we can embrace and receive all of it is already there. When we were born again, that's why it took a new creation. You couldn't fix the old one to handle all that. We weren't fixed. We weren't repaired. We weren't healed in our spirit. We were recreated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. 
All things are passed away, and all things have become new. Now, you know, that didn't have to do with the outside man, because if you got born again and, and you had black hair, and the next day you're still going to have black hair, short nose, long nose, tall, short, whatever. That didn't change. He's talking about on the inside. On the inside, everything, everything became new. And it became Son of God new, cannot die new, cannot even uh, age in the sense of decay. Even though your outward man is growing older, you're not any older in the sense of decay than the day you were born again. You will never age in that sense. You will mature, you will develop, you will enlarge, you will expand far beyond what we can put words to right now. But you will never get old. That's already happened. I said, that's already happened. Now your body, you know it's getting older. But the more real it is that you're not just a body, then even if the body is moving a little slower or looks a little different, you don't let that dictate to you who you are and what you are. That's just your house and it's all temporary. We knew that anyway. And soon and very soon, that's going to get fixed too. And we'll have a body that fits our spirit. And it's going to be just like the Lord Jesus' body the New Testament tells us, and, and we already see some uh, glimpses of what that's like. He, he walked through walls. He appeared differently. He's there, and then he's here, and then he's there, and could eat. <laughs> eat fish and bread, and you can touch it just like you can this. You can eat. You can zip here. You can zip there. You don't get tired. You don't get old. You don't get fat. (laughs) What we have to look forward to. Why shouldn't everybody want to get saved and and get in on this? If they saw it and understood it, they would. But the devil's doing his best to blind people and keep them from seeing this. What we're talking about is the goodness of God. And that's what leads men to repentance. But so many times the goodness hadn't been preached. Condemnation has been preached. Rules and religion, tradition's been preached. That keeps them away by the thousands. Uh, Read our verse again, please. I'm going to read this to you from another translation. The weast, or woost, depending on how you pronounce it. He says, our, our mouth stands open to you. We speak freely to you. We keep nothing back. O Corinthians, our heart is broadened and enlarged. Said out loud, our heart, our heart is, broadened is broadened and enlarged. And enlarged. He said, you are not compressed or narrowed down in us. Now he's talking about your heart being compressed and, be, and, and being narrowed down. He said, you have ample space in our heart. We hold you within a great love. But you are compressed and narrowed down. He, talking about, he said, in your bowels or in your insides, the King James said. He said, you also be enlarged. Make a large place in your heart for me, he said. Listen to the Message Bible. This is interesting. It brings up a side of this. Verse 11, 
Dear, dear Corinthians, I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide, open, spacious life. We believe in prosperity. We believe in a good God who will give you the desires of your heart. Who will give you richly all things to enjoy. But we must not forget that the Master said, A man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Having a bunch of things does not make you great. In our society, some people think that. But no amount of money makes you great. No amount of houses or or cars, or jewelry, or clothes, or it can't make you great. But God has foreordained us to greatness. And it has to do with what's inside. And for us to increase, we must increase in heart first. I know it takes millions to build buildings and pay for TV broadcasts and it takes cars and trucks and boats and planes and all kind of stuff. But all of that is connected to this. If you can't, no matter what God would minister to us, if you're so narrow on the inside that you can't receive it or conceive it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. He can't get you to it. Yeah. And it's not because He can't do it, because He can easily do it. The challenge is not what He can do. How many believe God could do any amount of money for the body of Christ in this economy? Yeah. Right now. Yeah. This year. Why why couldn't he? Makes no no difference to him. He's not limited and restricted by what men are doing or not doing. He meets all of our needs according to his riches in glory. By Christ Jesus, not in the national economy. So it's not, not based on what he can do. But like the psalmist said, they turned and limited the Holy One of Israel. How did they limit Him? I want you to notice this. Again and again, He referred to them as hard and stiff. Stiff Stiff-necked, hard and stiff. And this is another description of... Of a narrow heart. And it's one of the. One of the things Jesus strongly. Most strongly rebuked. His own disciples about. Didn't he? Hardness of heart. And unbelief. Narrowness of heart. Is hardness of heart. They are different symptoms of the same condition. And I hope you're not wanting something else. Because this is it. (laughs) And we are to present ourselves this week to the Lord. Yes, amen. Are you listening? Yes, amen. And open up ourselves to Him. Yes. And let Him reach down inside us. Yes. Let Him work on us by His Holy Spirit. And melt the hardness. Somebody say melt the hardness. Melt the hardness. And enlarge our heart. Before something can be enlarged, expanded, it has to become flexible and pliable. If it's rigid, it doesn't move. It can't expand. We've already touched on this. Our spirit has the ability. 
I, I got to read scripture to you, or you might not even believe this. Uh, go to Ephesians. Thank you, Master. Ephesians, the third chapter. Ephesians 3.14. He said, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is bowing the knee. Does that sound like hard or soft? Not, not haughty, but humble. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he would grant you. According to the riches of his glory. Now that's the very same phrase as how you meet your needs. <laughs> hmm? But according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's not a period. Why do you need to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in your inner man? That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Not that a little bit of Christ might get in you. That Christ may dwell in your hearts. How big is Christ? How big is Christ? Can He fit? In you. (laughs) That you being rooted and grounded in love. Here we go. Verse 18. Huh? May be able to comprehend. Now this is not talking about head knowledge. Comprehend has to do with grasping and embracing. And the next word talks about experiencing. Comprehend with all the saints. This is available to all saints. What is the breadth? That's the wideness. And the length? That's how long. And the depth? And the height? Verse 19. And to know, that word means experience, like Adam knew Eve. Experience some of the love of Christ. (laughs) See, religion, if it dared to do anything, it piecemealed it. That you could have a little taste of God and you might touch on something of the Lord. And, and uh, God created you and I at the new birth with the capacity, the capacity to comprehend the entirety of God. Who is love. God is love. And if you embrace. Back it up. Verse 18. The breadth. The whole breadth of love. And the whole length of love. And the entire depth. The entire height of love. God is love. That's what He is. Can you see that for you to begin to do this, it's going to take some major flexibility yes. 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 on yes. with your insights. And remember, this does all not have all of this does not have to occur by the end of the year. <laughs> We've already talked about throughout the ages to come. When God speaks. He's looking at the end from the beginning when he speaks. 
these verses don't have an expiration date. <laughs> when he says it's going to happen, we, th- we tend to think in when? Next year? Surely by the five years. That's one of the things that amazes me so much about God. His patience. And the greater your faith is, the greater your patience is. They go hand in hand. There's a lot of people can believe God like a house of fire for three days. <laughs> but then when and it looks worse than it did before, uh, people start getting weary and start, you know, fading and cast their confidence away. But the strongest faith can stay just as excited year after year after year after year, knowing it does not change one thing because he said it. And though heaven and earth pass away, it's got to come to pass. Let me me remind you of a prayer Jesus prayed. That they all may be one as I and you, Father, are one. We do not look like that at all. All the different denominations and splits within the denominations and groups within the groups within the groups. I mean, a lot of folks, they can't keep 20 people together. They'll split and go across the road. And he says, you will, you're all going to be one. Just like me and the Father are one. You'd look at that with your eyes even right now and think, how in the world? Could that ever, but it will come to pass. It will, it's coming to pass. How many believe the Master's prayer will come to pass? It will come to pass. We will be one. One. Just like He and the Father are one. It'll happen. We're on our way. It's happening right now. We're moving that way. Our perspective is so short. We just see this little bitty window here, but He sees all of this and all of that. He prayed this prayer for them. So we know it's God's will to answer this prayer positively because he wouldn't have told you to pray it otherwise. I want you to pray it over yourself right now. Say it out loud, Father God. God, I pray pray that you would grant me me, according to the riches of your glory to to be strengthened with might might by your Spirit In my inner man. man. That Christ. Christ May dwell in my heart. heart. By faith. faith. That I. I, Being rooted and grounded in love. love, May be able to comprehend. comprehend With all saints. saints, What is the breadth. breadth And length. And and depth. and depth And And height. And to know and experience the love of Christ which passes knowledge that I may be filled with all the fullness of God. Filled with what? A little piece of God? Filled with all the fullness of God. Of God. But notice where the prayer started. Strengthened with might by His Spirit. It takes the power of His Spirit working in us to enable us to enlarge, to grasp and and receive on this level. Look at the very next verse, verse 20. Folks have pulled that verse out, but it's part of this. Now unto Him. What, what, is, what does this mean, now unto Him? This is having prayed this and released your faith. This is what happens. He heard your prayer. He will be strengthening you and empowering you to enlarge and to grasp the breadth, the length, the depth, 
the height to be filled with the fullness of God. And so he will be able to do exceeding abundantly above what you've asked or thought, not independently from you, but according to that power that is working in you that you just prayed and asked for. You can receive so much more with your spirit than your mind can comprehend. You can receive bigger than you know how to ask. (laughs) By faith. (laughs) Ooh, glory to God. (laughs) I hadn't thought of a half of what I said tonight. The Lord is answering our prayers. We can receive so much more than what our mind understands. That's how he can do exceeding abundantly above what you asked or what you thought. Because the power that's working in you is so far beyond what you even knew to ask or knew to think. And the enemy to these wonderful, wonderful things? Little, narrow, straight, tight, rigid, hard heart. That's our problem. More than the devil. More than your relatives and more than your neighbors and more than your co-workers. Right there. Narrowness, hardness of heart. Go back to the the gospel accounts, please. Can you take a little more tonight? Uh, Mark 8. I'm going to have to get the CD. I'm serious. They even know what I said. Glory. And, I, and oh, I like it. I like it. That preachers, you know what I'm talking about? Because you, you're preaching beyond yourself. Beyond yourself. God, the, the Spirit of God just feeding it to you before you even have a chance to think about it. Mm, 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 mm. But the, the exciting, can you sense though, what's all this about? This is about you and I becoming far greater than we are right now. And it's not measured by how many cars you got. How big your house is. Hmm? It's by how big your heart is in God. And we must desire this more Than a car and a house. Hmm? What needs to happen tonight for us to go any further is to get a hunger and to get a desire. Come on, do you want to expand on the inside? Do Do you want to enlarge? Hallelujah. I tell you, before you go there, hold your place there and go to 1 Kings 4, or they'll put it up on the screen for us, 1 Kings 4 and 29. You can just hold your place there and mark 8, there it is, Solomon prayed and said, God, I, I'm like a little child. I, I got the job of leading your people. I'm, I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit now. And I can't do it of myself. I need you to give me your wisdom and your ability to lead this people. 
the way they ought to be led. And God appeared to him in the night time in direct response to this prayer. And he said, because you didn't ask me for money. You didn't ask me to win your battles and the life of your enemies. You didn't ask me to make you live a long, long time. Because you asked me for this. Is obviously the prayer really pleased the Lord. Because you asked me for this, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you wisdom like nobody before you's ever had. And notice what happened. God gave Solomon what? Wisdom and understanding exceeding much and what? And what? And what? Largeness of heart like the sand on the seashore. Come on. There are places on this planet where the the ocean waves are lapping up against the shore and as far as the eye can see, it's sand, 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 sand. And I want you to realize that God can do that on the inside of you. He can make you, He can expand you So that you might be only this wide on the outside, but on the inside as far as the eye can see, in either direction, your heart just goes on and on and on and on. That's not a imaginary, that's not fairy tale, that's spiritual reality. And it takes expansion of heart before you can embrace the greater vision or the greater ability of God. We're talking earlier about projects and how you got to see it before you can actually have faith. The two go hand in hand. We know God's will is increase. We know God's will for our personal life and our knowledge of Him and our relationship and our families and our churches and our ministries and reach more people and more word, more revelation, more healings, more fillings, more deliverance. We know that. But that doesn't happen independent of this. Yeah, that's good. You see some church, God do great things for them and great move of God and a lot of people come and get saved. and uh, That didn't happen. The service, it started happening. Something happened in people's hearts. Something happened months and years or whenever before. Why? Because God can't Give it to you if you can't receive it. Before there can be a, an outpouring, there's got to be a receptacle to receive it. And if, you know, people holler and shout about, oh, we want a major outpouring, a major outpouring, a major outpouring, and you're standing here like this. Major outpouring. In your little three ounce cup. What do you need a major outpouring for? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and just with that, you're going, ha, blah, blah, ha. Oh, that was a lot. <laughs> the limiter is not what God can do. It's what can we receive. And we don't receive with our head. We don't receive with our body. With the heart, man believes. With the heart, man receives. And so what we can receive, how much we can receive from him, is directly affected by how narrow, how straightened our heart is. And this shouldn't be too hard for us to comprehend because, I mean, uh, it shows up on the outside. 
Doesn't it? Yes. I have to watch it. I'll get ahead of myself here. It wouldn't hurt you to hear it again, though, would it? I mean... Wideness of heart, largeness of heart, you can discern by numerous indicators outside. And the same way with narrowness of heart. Two of the biggest indicators of narrowness of heart are fear and selfishness. The more narrow and hardened the heart, the more full of fear and the more self-centered and selfish one is. The larger the heart, the more fearless and selfless. Big of heart. God's heart's big enough to scoop up the whole world. <laughs> You're his child. Made in his image. Made out of the same flexible material. Your spirit. He's the father of spirits. And you're made of the same material that he is. Through wrong thinking and wrong believing, you can become rigid. Actually, through a lot of wrong teaching through the church too. You see, the more narrow a people are, there are all kinds of churches all across this country, all across the world. They love God much as they know. They believe in Him much as they know. But they're absolutely scared to have any fun in church. <laughs> they're, they're petrified of it. I know I was having a meeting. It was in a, a civic center thing. I was preaching one time. And... Uh, there were some folk on the front. Later on, I found out that they this was brand new to them. But man, we'd get to going, and, and they'd get to laughing. and they'd stick their hand up, and then they'd go, oh. <laughs> and they'd put their hand back down and close their mouth and look straight like, what am I doing? <laughs> and then we'd go a few minutes, and they'd kind of forget where they were, you know, and they'd, they'd go, ha, 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 and they'd throw that, and they'd go, oh, wow. <laughs> Because no telling how many times they were pinched as a kid. And how many times they were taught this and taught that and suppressed. And man's traditional religion will narrow you up and squeeze you until you're absolutely full of fear about everything. You can't think of anything except how things affect you. And you live in this little bitty me world. If it was me, it would be me living in Keith's world. <laughs> oblivious to everybody else. Oblivious to God. I need money for my electric bill. And my toe hurts. And this is your world. This is your world. Isn't it pitiful? Isn't it pathetic? The Lord said this to my heart some years ago in a time of prayer. He said, I don't mean I heard a voice, but inside me. He said, son, most of the world is either dead or asleep. Talking about spiritually. Well, if you're dead, you're oblivious to what's going on, right? And if you're in a, a deep sleep, same thing. You're oblivious to your surroundings. And somebody in a deep, deep sleep laying beside somebody dead from a distance, they look just alike, don't they? And that's why the Scripture says, Awake, thou that sleepest, 
Awake from the dead and Christ shall give you light. And what does light do to living organisms? You ever seen sunshine shine on a flower, shine on a rose? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Expansion. Enlargement. Beauty. Just open right up so you can receive a thousand times more light than you were receiving last week. And the amazing thing about us is you don't get to the stops. There are no stops. There are no walls. That you may be filled with the what? Come on, did you, do you believe that verse? I know, I know you can't fully understand it. I, we can't, but can you believe it by faith? That you can be filled with what? The fullness of God. Say it out loud. Filled with the fullness, all the fullness of God. Say it out loud. Filled with all the fullness of God. Say it again. Filled with all the fullness of God. You must be capable of receiving it. Must be. Have to be. Before we can take the next steps, before we can do our part to advance the kingdom, before the church and churches can develop to the level they're supposed to and, and the new ministries and new churches can come to the, into being and come to where they're supposed to be. It starts in here. We have to enlarge inside to where we can see it, to where we can embrace it, to we, where we have the capacity to receive it. And then once we can see it inside, then God is able to do exceeding abundantly above what we asked or thought according to what's working in us. That power that is working in us that's bigger than our understanding. Go to Mark 8 now, please. I believe the Lord's going to minister to people. Tonight in your bed, when you wake up in the morning, you're going to have things going on in you. Hallelujah. Largeness of heart, like the sand on the seashore, just goes on and on. Uh, Mark. The 8th chapter, in verse 15. Jesus charged them, and he said, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. Watch out for it. Verse 16. And they reasoned among themselves... And they said, it is because we have no bread. (laughs) Verse 17. And when Jesus knew it, he said to them, why reason ye? Because you have no bread. You're not just on the wrong page, you're in the wrong book. (laughs) Huh? He's talking about... Doctrine that affects the church, and they're talking about whole wheat or white. (laughs) Now that's some difference. That's some gap in comprehension and understanding, isn't it? (laughs) He said, why are you reasoning? Because you have no bread. 
Perceive ye not yet, neither understand. Have you your heart yet hardened? Can you see what's going on here? They have no idea what he's talking about. And it's not because Jesus was a bad teacher. And people get irritated and go, well, why don't you just make it plain and come right out and say it? Why you got to talk about leaven of this and leaven of that and, and see, just, just be plain. Well, no, why don't you expand? Get to where you can understand something. <laughs> I believe Jesus is doing it right. Do you believe he's doing it right? He said exactly what he should have said, the way he should have said it. And they did not have to be like that. But you see something that needs to change in them. What's the problem? What's the problem of the heart? Hardness. Your heart is hardened. Hardened describes this narrowed, rigid, inflexible, incapable of expanding to receive more. That's why he could talk to people and reveal mysteries of the universe that had not been made known since the foundation of the world and most of the people that heard it didn't have a clue what he said. And he said to you it's revealed in parables. It's not a matter that people can't. It's a matter of being restricted in yourself. That's what Paul was telling them. He said, be enlarged. So then it's not something that they're helpless victims of. It's something that they're perpetuating that they need to stop right now. I heard a man testify, a very powerful, successful man of God. And he had an experience in the Lord. And uh, it, it struck me when he said it. I knew exactly what he's talking about. He had an out-of-body experience. And the Lord let him see some things from uh, end to beginning about his life. And he said just in a flash, the Lord took him back. To when he was young, 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 and first gave his heart to the Lord and just emphasized it. And in a moment of time, he realized how precious that was to the Lord the way his heart was then. And then he let him see in the next decades of time without him realizing it, he had gotten hard. He called it growing up. And mature, but he had gotten hardened in ways he didn't even realize. And the Lord brought him back and said, That's so beautiful to me. There he was in his early, early teens, in the floor, crying his heart out, totally open before the Lord, hardly knew anything, but loved the Lord with every fiber of his being. Didn't the scripture say unless you become converted and become like a little child? That's what this is talking about. Before children are old enough to learn some of this other junk, there's numerous things that they are that we're supposed to be. But a couple of them is, one of them, they're fearless. Until they're taught it, they're fearless. (laughs) It bothers parents because they don't see fear in anything. And we should learn to respect what things can do, but we ought not grow up and mean that means fearful. Mm-hmm. And they're also open. Little ones, before they're taught and learn different, they are open. Open. This pleases the Lord. Because to Him, even though we're trying to act like adults, to Him... When he says, my little children, it's not a figure of speech. 
to the Ancient of Days? I don't care if you're 150. You are little, little, little child. And so instead of, instead of acting like a, a know-it-all, we need to be the way that pleases the Lord. Tender-hearted. Somebody say tender-hearted. See, be, having your heart enlarged is tied right in with being tender-hearted because it has to do with the flexibility required to expand. Somebody say tender-hearted. And what may not have been as obvious is that that is tied directly to your ability to understand. Why didn't they understand he was talking about revelation that affected the body instead of whole wheat or white? Why? Because of their hearts being hard and narrow. Because when your heart softens and becomes tender... And you open up. Now what just goes over other people's head? You see it. What means nothing to so many? You discern it. And you won't realize how much you've grown until somebody says, what in the world are they talking about? And you go, oh, well, this, this, and this. And they look at you like, how would you get that? And to you it's just obvious. But it's simply because your heart. Has enlarged. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 17. Have you your heart? He said, why why reason you? Because you have no bread. Perceive you not yet? Don't you understand? Have you your heart yet hardened? Having eyes? You see not? Having ears? Hear you not? Do you not remember? I broke the five loaves among five thousand. How many baskets full of fragments did I take up? They said, twelve. He said, when it was a seven among 4,000, how many baskets do we take up? They said, seven. He said, well, then why don't you understand? We're not talking about whole wheat or white. <laughs> and I think they still looked at him and went, huh? <laughs> and it's not because the revelation is so deep. It's not because it's so hard to get a hold of. That's not the problem. Because we got the best teacher in the universe. The Holy Spirit can make it so gettable to anybody anywhere. The problem is this. This fear. This tightness. This self-centeredness. This living in Keith's world. It means you you have eyes, but you don't see. You have ears, but you don't hear. You should be putting things together, but you're not. They're still disconnected and meaningless to you. Oh, mama. We're on the verge. (laughs) So many sitting here. You're you're that you're in you got a foot in the door. Uh, Of an enlargement. Oh, my, 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 I, I can see it. An enlargement. And, and if you pursue it, and, and, and if we do the things the Lord shows us this week, and don't, don't have any preset thing in mind. I mean, if the Lord tells us, we may get off our chairs and, and just uh, seek the Lord for an hour. Huh? Or just worship Him. Don't, don't have any preconceived ideas. You don't just need a bunch more knowledge. We need this. We don't need a bigger head. (laughs) We need a bigger heart. (laughs) And what I said I saw, as that happens, I saw saw person after person, I saw minister after minister, things clicking. You saw this goes with this, and that's why the Lord told us this, and that's why he had me do this for 15 years, and that's why, and it'll just start converging. And you can can embrace the plan. And you'll look at it and go, whoo, (laughs) that's going to take something to do that, I I thought maybe we were maybe halfway there or something, but whoo, that ain't halfway. That's, yeah. And it's already working to just keep expanding, keep expanding, keep expanding, keep expanding. 
Because our time is short. Isn't it? We've got a job to do. I don't want to come short of it. Do you? No. I don't want to do half of what I'm supposed to do. Do you want to do half if I don't want to do two thirds? I want to get it all. Receive it all. Believe it all. Walk it all out. Get all the fruit of it. Huh? Get all the fruit of it. And then when it's time for me to get out of here, have no regrets. Go, man, I have run my race. I have finished my course. We have done everything that we had on our heart to do. And then the next thing you do, you're standing before the Lord and Him be able to say, well done. Well done. Good and faithful servant. You weren't just narrow and stiff. You, you opened up. You let me use you. You let me expand you. You let me bring into things you never imagined or thought you'd want to do or could do. You became greater. Stand up on your feet, everybody, please.